from Microbe TV. This is Beyond the Noise, episode number 73, recorded on July 7, 2025. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. This is the video version of Paul's column on Substack called Beyond the Noise, cutting to the chase on important health topics, which uh, you started, I think, two years ago now, right, Paul? Right, I think it was March two years ago, right? And then I was reading them and I thought, why don't we make a video version of this? Short and sweet. And uh, to my delight, you agreed to do it. So number 73. Today we will look at Paul's latest column, Senator Cassidy's Lines in the sand. So back when uh, RFK Jr. was a candidate for the uh, head of health and human services, uh, he was before a Senate committee, and on that committee was Senator Cassidy, Republican from Louisiana, who's an MD. He voted yes for RFK Jr., despite him being a medical doctor interested in children's health. Uh, why did he vote yes? Everybody had a lot of hope for Senator William Cassidy. He was an adult gastroenterologist. He had made a point several times about the value of the hepatitis B vaccine. Since the CDC and the ACIP have recommended universal vaccination for children, the number of acute hepatitis B cases in our country has declined by almost 90 percent. A vaccine that prevents liver cancer, a vaccine that prevents cirrhosis. So he had experienced that as an adult gastroenterologist. So, so everybody was, was hopeful that he would be the, 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 the line in the sand. So as a physician who's been involved in immunization programs, I've seen the benefits of vaccinations. I know they save lives. I know they're a crucial part of keeping our nation healthy. He would be the person who wouldn't allow RFK Jr. to be confirmed. And if he voted no, it would have been 14 to 13 against RFK Jr.'s confirmation. But he voted yes. And when he voted yes, he tried to assure us that RFK Jr. would be in his control. And he did that by putting out a, a missive like this, in which he said, Mr. Kennedy and the administration committed that he and I would have an unprecedentedly close collaborative working relationship if he is confirmed. We will meet or speak multiple times a month. This collaboration will allow us to work well together and therefore be more effective. So although he voted yes, he was trying to reassure us that he would have control over a man who for 20 years had been an anti-vaccine activist, science denialist, and conspiracy theorist. Yeah, he basically believed what RFK Jr. told him, which was probably not the right thing to do. RFK Jr. has for 20 years lied over and over again. Senator Cassie believed that he just wouldn't be lying to him. Okay, when RFK Jr. was confirmed, there was an ongoing measles outbreak in the U.S. Uh, what should RFK Jr. have done that he didn't do? Well, so, so we currently have a measles epidemic that is bigger than any measles epidemic we've had in 33 years. Um, we've had three people die, two of whom were healthy little girls, six-year-old and eight-year-old girls in West Texas. Um, that three deaths equals the total number of measles deaths in the last 25 years. What should RFK Jr., as Secretary of Health and Human Services, done? He should have had a press conference and said, vaccinate your children. This is a preventable disease. There is no reason for children in this country to die from measles. But he didn't do that at all. He did quite the opposite. What he did in a meeting with Donald Trump is he said, measles epidemics occur every year. There have been four measles outbreaks this year in this country. Last year, there were 16. So it's not unusual. We have measles outbreaks every year. Then he said, if you compare us to Eastern Europe, to countries like Romania, or Kazakhstan, we're doing better. And so what we're doing right here in the United States is a model for the rest of the world. Whereas, in fact, he should have been comparing us to countries similar to us, like France or Germany. He then went on national Fox TV news and said, uh, measles vaccine causes blindness. 
Measles vaccine causes deafness. Measles vaccine kills people every year. The vaccine does. There are adverse events from the vaccine. It does cause deaths every year. It causes it causes all the illnesses that measles itself causes encephalitis and blindness, etc. All completely wrong. He said that measles, natural measles, prevents cancer and it prevents heart disease and it prevents autoimmune disease. So measles is a good thing. Measles vaccine is a bad thing. That right there should have ended his tenure as Secretary of Health and Human Services. Here you had healthy children dying of this virus in this country, and you have the Secretary of Health and Human Services basically ignoring it and, in fact, extolling the virtues of natural measles infection. That should have ended it right there. In any other administration, it would have. Well, he never would have gotten nominated in any other administration, but this one is just full of misinformation and lies. Did Senator Cassidy admonish RFK Jr. for this blatant misinformation? All you know is that, that Senator Cassidy put a, a, a tweet out on X saying that we should vaccinate our children. I don't know whether he said anything to Kennedy. Certainly he didn't say anything that was effective because if he said something that was effective, Kennedy should have immediately gotten out in front of the public and loudly and clearly and unabashedly declared that people need to vaccinate their children against measles. And that never happened. Never. Seems that Senator Cassidy should have had a press conference to make it widely known that he was critical of what RFK Jr. was doing, but he didn't do that as far as I know. No. All right. Now, in late May, RFK Jr. removes the COVID vaccine recommendations from, for young children and pregnant Mothers, I couldn't be more pleased to announce that as of today, the COVID vaccine for healthy children and healthy pregnant women has been removed from the CDC recommended immunization schedule. And did he consult ASIP on this as he had promised, Dr. Cassidy? No, quite the opposite. In fact, what he said, Cassidy, when he, he released this letter of things that he and RFK Jr. had agreed to, he said, if confirmed, he, RFK Jr., will maintain the CDC's ACIP, Advisory Committee for Immunization Practices, recommendations without changes. Well, the ACIP had already recommended the COVID vaccine for healthy young children. Why? Because healthy young children were still getting hospitalized, still going to the intensive care unit, and still dying from COVID. So he, he changed something that was already in existence. And further, he said that, that he, RFK Jr., was not going to be recommending the COVID vaccine for healthy pregnant women, when in fact that was an ACIP recommendation. Why? Because pregnancy is a risk factor for severe COVID. So that's directly in opposition to something that he, Cassidy, had said that RFK Jr. had agreed to. And he made that decision, RFK Jr., behind closed doors, unilaterally, and just simply declared this to be true as if it was handed down on high on stone tablets. I mean, this was really hard to watch. And people quit the CDC when that happened because they saw how RFK Jr., despite his claims for ushering in an era of radical transparency, had in fact ushered in an era where one man was making decisions behind closed doors without any uh, advice from experts. All right. In early June, he RFK Jr. then fires all 17 members of ASIP. Didn't he promise Cassidy not to do this without talking to him? That's exactly what he promised. This is something that Cassidy put out. Said he also, he also, he, RFK Jr. also committed that he would work within the current vaccine approval and safety monitoring systems. Well, he didn't do that. He fired all 17 people, making a bogus claim that they had been um, uh, they had conflicts of interest with pharmaceutical companies, which wasn't true. We've talked about that. And then he replenished them with uh, eight and then ultimately became seven people who, like him, had a history of anti-vaccine activity. So he now had in place an advisory committee that was very much like him, reflected his anti-vaccine, frankly, science denying conspiracy theorist beliefs. So the, the new members he appointed, uh, were any of them experts in vaccines? I think Cody Meisner had been certainly on the ACIP before. He, he was actually with me on the FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee. So yes, I think Cody Meisner was an expert. He had 
some unusual beliefs. He signed on to the Great Barrington Declaration to basically let this virus run, run wild. Um, and he also never supported uh, vaccines for children, which didn't make any sense. So he was an outlier there. But in general, at least he had the kind of experience or expertise which could make for good advice. Now, didn't Cassidy also ask RFK Jr. to consult with him when he appointed new members? I don't know. I mean, when he made that announcement to fire 17 people, um, RFK Jr. did. And when RFK Jr. then stocked the uh, new advisory committee with people of his own like mind, uh, Cassidy issued a statement saying that we needed to have a balanced representation and that we should delay the next ACIP meeting, which was uh, at the end of June, um, before until we have balanced representation. Well, I don't know what balanced representation means. What are you balancing? Are you balancing people who have an anti-science belief with those who have a science belief? Believe? Are you bouncing anti-vaccine activists with people who support the science that supports the use of vaccines? That didn't make any sense. But again, he, he insisted that the, um, the meeting uh, at the end of June be delayed, and it wasn't delayed. And again, nothing happened. Our, he, Senator Cassidy, just keeps drawing lines in the sand. They keep getting crossed, and nothing happens. I think RFK Jr. knows he is now working without any federal oversight. I don't know, Paul. My In my opinion, deciding what to do about vaccines is a science-based issue. We do not need non-scientists on the committee to make those decisions. Right. And look what happened. I think something happened at that committee meeting that really should scare people to death, which is that you had Lynn Redwood, who was an anti-science activist uh, against, uh, initially she founded a group called Safe Minds uh, back 25 years ago. I was on the ACIP between 1998 and 2000 when the issue of thimerosal, this ethyl mercury containing preservative in vaccines came up. And there was abundant evidence showing that it was a trivial contribution to what is our normal exposure to mercury, that there was a uh, study after study showing that there were children who received thimerosal containing vaccines were at no greater risk of anything like neurodevelopment delays as compared to people who received the same vaccines that didn't contain thimerosal. So all those data were there. Nonetheless, she's the one who presented this person, Lynn Redwood, who was part of the national vaccine, I'm sorry, part of the Children's Health Defense, which is RFK Jr.'s anti-vaccine uh, uh, group. She's the one who presented. And, you know, normally when you present before a vote, and this was a vote, you have to have subject matter experts review it. It's called uh, evidence to recommendation or ETR. That never happened. She presented data that were clearly wrong. And then you had the, the voting members vote five to one in favor of not allowing the, the use of thimerosal containing influenza vaccines. And um, it just shows you that step one, I mean, this is this was an anti-science recommendation, and I'm sure it's the first of many. Did Senator Cassidy say anything about this misinformation? Not a peep. All right. You also wrote in this column that RFK Jr. paid $150,000 to an Arizona law firm. So tell me, was this U.S. government money and what was it for? It was government money. It's, it's to set him up for his next step. His next step is to try and alter the vaccine injury compensation program. So the law firm he hired had an expertise in the vaccine injury compensation program, which was um, by law established in 1986, was set, was in effect by 1988. And I think that's his goal. I think what's going to happen over the next few months is sometime RFK Jr. is going to hold up a paper and say, look, the CDC was hiding this from you. Um, aluminum adjuvants in vaccines, so-called aluminum salts, have in fact caused autism or eczema, or asthma, he's then going to try and add that to the list of vaccine injury, uh, uh, compensatable uh, uh, in injuries. Sorry, he'll then add that to the list of uh, compensable injuries, or he'll take certain vaccines out of the uh, vaccine injury compensation program and leave them open to the slings and arrows of outrageous civil litigation, which almost ended vaccines in the 1980s, which is why we have the vaccine injury compensation program. And I think that's what he wants. I think he wants to eliminate vaccines in this country. I feel like I'm shouting in the wind here. He thinks we have traded infectious diseases for chronic diseases. He says that a hundred different ways. He says we need to ignore infectious diseases for a while and focus on chronic diseases. And when he talks about chronic diseases in children, he 
always says the instance of chronic disease in children is one in 32. Well, that's the instance of autism. And so he believes vaccines are causing autism. It doesn't matter how many studies you show him that they don't. It doesn't matter. And when he had testified in front of the second confirmation hearing in front of the Senator Cassidy's health committee, Cassidy said to him, you have to admit that vaccines don't cause autism. He didn't say that at all. In fact, he held up a paper by Mawson and colleagues claiming that um, in a Medicaid program in uh, Florida, that children were more likely to develop autism and other neurodevelopmental problems as compared to children who didn't get vaccines. And and um, and it, it, this paper was never published in the scientific journal or medical journal. It was never peer reviewed. It was methodologically horribly flawed. It was uninterpretable. And that was his gold standard science. This is just the beginning of this. I really do think he wants to end vaccine manufacturing in the United States. And as Secretary of Health and Human Services, he has the power to do that. So back to Senator Cassidy, are politics really more important than the health of children? What is the senator afraid of here? I think at this point, it's out of Senator Cassidy's hands. I, I think that um, he had a moment there at the confirmation hearing where I think he could have derailed that. But once he didn't derail the confirmation of RFK Jr., which which he passed, I think, at the end of February by a vote of 52 to 48 in the Senate, I think it's too late. I think there's only three ways that RFK Jr. steps down. One is that he voluntarily steps down because of an issue of physical or mental health. The second is that he would be impeached, which is not going to happen. I mean, the House of Representatives is Republican. The Senate is Republican. They're not going to impeach RFK Jr. because that would upset Donald Trump. So they're not going to do it. The third thing is he becomes so politically toxic to Donald Trump that Donald Trump asks him to step down. And the only way that happens is more children are going to need to suffer and die. Obviously, having a measles outbreak that has killed two, two healthy young children that is bigger than anything we've seen in more than 30 years isn't enough. But this is the beginning. There'll be, there'll be many more children who suffer and die unnecessarily, and I guess we'll find out what the limit is. Well, you know, it seems that Donald Trump likes polio vaccines. He, uh, he actually said once when, when RFK was claiming they didn't do anything, he said, actually, that polio vaccine is pretty good. So maybe if we have some cases of polio, that could be the tipping point. It's interesting you say that. Polio is certainly a very emotional disease. And I think whereas we're willing to accept thousands of cases of measles, we certainly wouldn't be willing to accept even 10 or 20 cases of polio. I think that is a different story. And Donald Trump was a child of the 1940s. I mean, he remembers polio. And when when um, actually uh, uh, RFK Jr.'s right-hand man, Aaron Seary, submitted in 2021 to the uh, FDA uh, essentially a proposition to to pull back on the inactivated polio vaccine. Uh, Donald Trump was one of the first to say, no, 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 don't touch that vaccine, as was Mitch McConnell, who, you know, mm -hmm. suffered polio as a child. And I think McConnell voted against uh, RFK Jr., correct? That's right. Okay, so finally, how does this what RFK Jr. is doing, how does this make America healthy again if infectious diseases are rising? It doesn't. I think RFK Jr. will only make America less healthy. Um, you know, when he when he sort of rode in on the, with the helping Donald Trump get elected, some of the things he said made sense. I mean, we are generally more obese than, than other developed world countries. We do have a higher rate of hypertension. We do have a higher rate of diabetes. I mean, there are we, we do eat ultra processed foods, not necessarily to our advantage. So that, that all makes a lot of sense. I think RFK Jr. will do little to nothing to affect that. And pulling red dye out of M&Ms and Skittles isn't going to make us much healthier. But certainly pulling vaccines away from our children will clearly make us less healthy. He's going to make America germy again. MAGA. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you can find Paul Offit at Beyond the Noise on Substack. We'll put a link in the show notes so that you can read the article. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent. 